Hey guys, Richard here, Downgrid Survival, reporting to you live from the United Police State of America. So, let's talk about a few things as I jump out here in traffic. There's a lot going on, and I'm going to kind of bring a few pieces of this puzzle together for you, I think. Um, yeah, all of you have seen the news headlines now, so you're are fully aware of what happened yesterday evening down in Mar Largo. And if you haven't, pull your head out of the sand, I guess, uh, and go check out the news headlines because it's getting serious. <laughs> it's been serious. It's been serious for a while, but it, it's just, it's at another level. So at a whole new level again. So let's, uh, let's talk for a couple moments about what a police state is. First of all, we'll just define a police state and that's when you have a regime that uses their their police forces, whether it be you know local or government or military, they use their their police forces to enforce their will upon the people. Uh, so it's kind of like the opposite of freedom, what we enjoy here in the United States, and what we used to enjoy here in the United States. So think of places like you know Iran; they're a police state, more or less. Uh, Venezuela. Um, um, Cuba, you know, a lot of these places, they, they, you know, think of, you know, World War II, not going any further than that, where you have, you know, a police force or an army that does the bidding of the supreme leader and uh, enforces bad things upon the people, upon the paupers, right? So, we're... We've reached that level, pretty much. Um, but let's just let's just set that aside for a minute. But, but don't forget it. Just just keep that in mind. CBS News released a, uh, a news story here just recently about they had uncovered evidence that only 30% of all the money that the United States and Western allies, I guess have been sending to Ukraine is actually making it to the front lines, actually going towards the equipment and things needed to fight the war. So they're saying only 30% is, is, is reaching its destination. And then for some reason that story was pulled and it's no longer out there and available for you to go look at. It's, it's been pulled. But there's still plenty of other news outlets and people talking about it because they did see it. I didn't see it personally. So 30%. Well, we know the big guy gets 10%. Zelensky is probably getting his 10%. That's still a lot of money and a lot of equipment and supplies that went somewhere. If this story is in fact true. Let's just assume for a moment that it could be. I mean, you know, yeah. So all that is going somewhere and we don't know where. So think about that for a moment. Then think about another news story that's been floating around for a little while now. And that is, uh, the most recent one, is that the IRS is going to grow by 87,000 people, agents. That's, that's huge. That, that's just, <clears throat> yeah, that's, <clears throat> excuse me, that, wow, that's just, that, that's, that's an enormous amount of people for one agency. Uh, you know, to grow and, and, and to have all those new people. But they will be, you know, agents. Keep that in mind. And then you hear <clears throat> the news story over the last uh, several months about how the federal government, different agencies in the federal government, are buying up ammo, buying up weapons and stockpiling ammo. And there was initially there was some speculation that they, uh, they were doing this because they were just trying to deplete the supply and take some stuff off the uh, the free market and make it harder for people like you and I to access. And nah, that's not true. Clearly, that's not true. So now let's consider the fact that... Let's go back to Ukraine for a second. This is Zelensky. Uh, you may or may not be aware of this, and a lot of people revere him as a hero because he's standing up to Russia and he survived all this time, and and you know they're just, the Ukrainians are just fighting hard, and God bless them, they are. You know the the people for for the people, um, 
But Zelensky himself, you know, he's not a great guy by any stretch of the imagination. And if you haven't heard already, be aware that he has um, pretty much abolished all the political parties other than his own in Ukraine. And he even threw in, uh, he even took one of the opposition leaders and put him under house, I think he's under house arrest now. I, I think initially he was in jail or prison or something. Now he's under house arrest. So he's, he's doing these things to really to suppress any opposition to his party because he wants to stay in power, right? And then you come coming back full circle, and now we see what's happening in Mar Largo yesterday, and we know how hard people have been attacking the Trump administration, specifically Trump, and how hard they have gone after him when he was in office and all these stories that were made up that have now been proven to be false and all these sham trials that are going on it sure sounds like they're trying to suppress the opposing party yeah let's go back and think about you know only 30 percent of all the billions and billions and billions of dollars that we've sent to ukraine made it to ukraine and let's all consider for a moment that we have all these people, uh, all these government agencies that are scooping up guns and ammo, and all these, you know, these are federal employees, right? These are uh, agents and, and, and things of the federal government. It's starting to all come together, and it's starting to paint a really nasty, nasty picture of what our future holds. Just let that sink in for a minute. So, what's that mean for you and I? It means we need to prep harder. We need to keep prepping. Because, you know, I, I, I like watching or reading comments from people on social media. And it, even in some of these news articles that I read, I, I like to scroll down to the bottom and then read some of the comments. And... You've always got people down there lambasting about, well, if they do this, we're going to do that, and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we're over 18 months now into this regime, and and look at all the craziness that's been going on, and nothing's happened. So get the idea out of your head right now that somehow there's going to be a red line that gets crossed where the American people are going to say, yep, yeah, we've had enough, and we're going to stand up, and I don't see that happening. I don't see a path forward where something like that would ever happen. Because, you know, when you have a state, um, you know, a dictatorship, a state-run government, they control the media, they control they control everything. They control the information. And so information can't get out. And so we're kind of left to as individuals just doing the best we can to survive and and stand up for what we believe in whenever we can, but it's going to be small, right? I mean, it's going to be small little efforts moving forward small little successes on an individual level rather than any type of you know gotta be careful what I say here looking for words gotta be real careful what I say and end up in the gulag but you get what I'm talking about it's on the individual level that we're, we just gotta protect ourselves protect our families prepare for the future and just do the best we can to continue surviving because there's, there's not an army that is standing in the waiting that's going to stand up to and stop all the stuff that is happening right now and all the stuff that is coming at us like a freight train, is what I'm trying to say. So let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are about all the missing money, about what happened in Mar Largo, about you know, all our government agencies scooping up guns and ammo. And uh, tell me what you think. I'd like to hear what you think. This isn't conspiracy theory. This is just facts of, of things that are happening. 
Um, you go out there and search for it yourself, it's out there. But when you kind of bring it all together, it paints an ugly picture and doggone it, I just, I hate talking about all this doom and gloom constantly, but that's, that's the nature of what it is. That's just how we live our life now. So, yeah, that's that. Hey, uh, I'll see you in the next video.